Hello, I'm Abby Malone, and this is Invest Insights, where we interview thought leaders who are shaping our communities today. In today's episode, I speak with Bob Swindell, the president and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance. Bob, the governor of Florida, Governor DeSantis, recently moved Florida into phase three of the reopening process. What does that mean for Broward County, and how is the Greater Fort Lauderdale facilitating the reopening? Phase three and the announcement of phase three uh, created some confusion in the market, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm on a weekly call with uh, hotel owners, general managers, uh, restaurant group operators. And um, boy, when you talk to folks, you know, weekly, um, you realize, you know, that, that some industries have done okay. Um, the construction trades have actually, I think, done better. They're busier than ever. Um, but we're clearly seeing, you know, hospitality has been just devastated by this. So, um, you know, the governor asked me to serve on one of his reopening task forces three months ago, um, and that was great. It was a statewide group, so I was talking to, you know, to business people all over the state of Florida, and what a reopening should look like. You know, what guidelines do we, you know, implement? Um, you know, not knowing what, uh, you know, is there going to be a vaccine for this virus? You know, what is the long term? Do we all gain immunity overnight? Is that going to be the magic bullet? Uh, so in those conversations, we talked a lot about what does reopening look like. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, Broward was is already in phase two with our restaurants at 50%. Um, so there were aspects of that that we were already implementing for phase two. For phase three, it, uh, it definitely confused the hospitality industry because you just can't open your restaurant tomorrow. You need to hire people or bring them back, train, with new guidelines, a lot of training is gonna be key to success. Um, and that's why the county came out and so did Mayor Trantellis for this, just the city of Fort Lauderdale, trying to come out with executive orders that were a little more clear in what was expected of residents when you went out in public. And then more importantly, what was expected of the business people. Um, and then for us, and we'll talk about this, I hope a little bit later, but the International Boat Show was coming up um, a lot of discussion with county government. Uh, are we actually going to have it? Um, when they canceled our Basel in Miami-Dade, um, that sort of sent a chill through the marine industry folks in Broward. Like, wow, that's that's a you know they do a fair amount of indoor work with with our with outdoor work rather with our Basel, um, and that's one of the things we thought was a real saving grace for the boat show is a lot of it's uh, outside. Um, but I think. You know, the biggest challenge in working with the local hospitality industry was just what are the new regulations? Um, a lot of residents assumed that, okay, no more face mask is required. They can't, they can't give me a citation because I don't wear a mask. That really put, um, how, you know, hospitality folks in an awkward position. Like if you're a restaurant owner and, you know, hospitality is what you do. And, you know, you've got to remind guests when they come in, you need to wear a mask. And, and people didn't think that was required anymore. So I think making make it really clear and, and what I'm really proud of with Broward County and, and our local government and the business community working together was what does phase three look like for Broward? Um, we are going to be unique as an urban county and, and how we, we manage that. Um, but let's remember the guidelines that have got the, the trends going in the right direction right now. I think, uh, you know, when we look at Labor Day weekend, it went really well, not a spike. Um, again, I was on a call a couple of days ago with uh, Mayor uh, Holmes has been hosting calls with his mayors throughout Broward County. Um, and Dr. Thackey, who runs the health department, gave us an update. Um, again, you know, trends are going in definitely the right way. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the, the longer answer that you didn't ask for is, you know, a lot of it is really in planning and how do we make people safe? Um, you know, we created the Supporter of Broward campaign to instill safety, but also encourage people to go back out again. You know, we don't have to let this virus totally define how we're living. Um, if you're high risk, you should definitely be more guarded and thoughtful and, and maybe not go out. Um, but uh, if you follow the guidelines, you should be safe. Um, and the restaurant community and hotels, uh, we're doing a lot of cross promotions, with Riverside Hotel, um, you know, the Hilton on the beach, Andreas has just been a a thought leader in the whole uh, SOB campaign, but more importantly, how do we create safe environments for our guests when they visit from outside the area? And we want people to feel comfortable. We don't want South Florida viewed as a hotspot. We want to be known as a great place to come visit, um, and you can do it safely, and the, the folks in hospitality will make sure that you're when you're here.
Before we jump into the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, you've mentioned the SOB campaign. Can you describe to our readers what that is? Sure. So it's not for everybody. It was a little edgy. Um, but, but three, four months ago, um, internally, we started talking. It's like, you know, man, our, our retailers, you know, our hospitality businesses have just been devastated by the virus. Um, you know, totally beyond their control, uh, not being able to host people in your restaurant. Um, you know, how do we get people back on the mindset of, hey, let's go back out again. It's safe. Um, so we were working on a buy local campaign and that was when we talked to our um, Zimmerman Advertising does all of our advertising for the Alliance and they do it uh, as a member of our CEO council and, you know, they donate their time and creativity um, to marketing Greater Fort Lauderdale as a, as a great destination for business. Um, so we reached out to them and Michael Goldberg, the CEO, and said, you know, Michael, um, would you serve in our marketing committee for this effort? And he's like, I said, it's 90 days, in and out, short, sweet. We just want to be able to really encourage people to go back out and do it safely. Um, a couple of days later, he called me and he's like, you know, we like your buy local campaign, but, you know, buy local sort of bland. We wanted something that's going to get people's attention. Um, you know, you've got no money to spend on this. So how do you get people's attention? And also make it engaging, have a little fun with it. And they said, we have, we have an edgy idea. Are you okay with edgy? And I'm like, and he wouldn't tell me what it was. I'm like, no, I said, you know, present it to the, the steering committee. Um, Tony Coley, the CEO of, uh, of the Bard Market, South Florida Market President for Truist Bank and Penny Schaefer, the uh, Market President for Florida Blue, our two co-chairs said, you know, present it to them and we'll, you know, so he presented the idea and it was, uh, you know, supporter of Broward. And well, I want to be a supporter of Broward and to do that, I'm going to wash like an SOB. I'm going to play like an SOB. I'm going to chill like an SOB. Um, but if, if people make the wrong assumption about SOB, that's their, that's their fault. Um, this is about supporters of Broward. Um, so, you know, both, both Tony and, and Penny, who are parts of large organizations, um, it's funny because people's, you know, they, they sort of get this quizzical look like, where is this going? And when they realize it's not really going anywhere bad, it's just really to have fun with it. They were like, yeah, this is fun. And then uh, the next big presentation for me was Mayor Holness. Um, you know, Mayor Holness is, is originally from the Caribbean. He's, uh, he's thoughtful, a little conservative on social issues and um, he started chuckling as soon as we, we, we rolled it out for him. So he thought it was, was funny. He said, you know, people are going to have fatigue from these guidelines, Bob. He said, our businesses need this kind of, um, it's important. We want to stay safe, but we want us to have a little bit of fun with it um, because we want people to embrace the guidelines. Um, so uh, he gave a, a thumbs up and then our county administrator was next and, and she just chuckled as well. So I felt we were in a pretty good spot to go. Um, it's not for everybody. Um, some of our city mayors were uncomfortable with the uh, whole idea of using SOB. Um, but Mayor Trantelos, Mayor Fort Lauderdale, uh, again, thought it was, for all the reasons we've discussed, the right thing to do. Um, so we launched the campaign. It's all been funded by donations to our foundation. There's been no money out of our economic development budget that's been used for this. Um, and I really appreciate the business community stepping up and investing in this because everyone realized that uh, you know, we've got to get, you know, people going back out, you know, patronizing our small businesses. Um, so it's been, it's been fun. Um, we have a, we're launching this whole uh, safety uh, kit program for local restaurants and retailers. Um, and we feel right now is a good time to do it because there is that fatigue factor. And I think if, you know, if people see a sign that says, wait here like an SOB, you know, it's a lot better than, you know, social distancing and that mantra it's like, okay, I can, I can chuckle and I can have fun with that. Um, we've got thousands of masks that we're giving out that says, you know, real SOBs wear a mask um, to really reinforce that uh, the mask is to protect other people, not so much yourself. Um, but uh, we're all in this together and we want to make a safe environment, but we really need to get, um, you know, our economy restarted again in Broward County. Well, one of the things that is a huge um, uh, push to the economy every single year is the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. And while national events, uh, big large scale events have been canceled, uh, this one is still moving forward. Why is it so important to host this event? How important it is to the local, local economy? And what other events uh, will you be supporting, if, whether small or large, moving forward? 
So, you know, great question, and, and you're right. This is, you know, uh, former Fort Lauderdale Mayor Jack Seiler used to say that, you know, the, the boat show is our annual Super Bowl. I mean, look at the economic impact that it has. You know, you know, these mega yachts change ownership, you know, hundreds of millions, if not a billion, a billion dollars in economic impact and just the, the transactions that take place. Um, and, and we were, you know, having frequent conversations with, with the Marine Industries, Marine Industries Association of South Florida that actually owns the show. And then Informa is the company that produces the show for them. And Informa is, if not the largest, it's one of the largest uh, show um, uh, organizers in, in the world. Um, I think they've done, they told me the other day, I think they've done five or six shows, you know, large events in China. Um, so if you look at, at a partner who has, you know, global experience and understands best practices, Informa is the best partner you could have. Um, they were committed to make sure that the, the, the show was safe. Um, it's a smaller footprint this year. We won't be doing anything at the convention center. Um, but I had to, you know, uh, in my conversations with, with our county commissioners and with, with our county administration, who ultimately gave it, you know, the thumbs up or the thumbs down, it was, you know, this is really the start of the season for so many small businesses, you know, thousands and thousands of jobs in Broward County, hundreds of companies that do um, repair work for, you know, the engines, generators, water makers, stabilizers, all these, these systems that these yachts require, you know, they come in for the show, they go to the yard first and they get serviced. And, you know, I know a lot of these small marine industry companies myself, I know how important the show is to them, but it really does kick off the season. Um, it's incredibly important to them. Um, and again, you know, these are a lot of, you know, blue collar jobs and tradesmen that, that do the work on these vessels. Um, so critically important to the marine industry, which is, again, as you said, it's, it's one of our, you know, foundational parts of our economy in Broward County. Um, and the second thing that's important is it's about a reputation as a community and as South Florida. Um, you know, when we were identified as a hotspot, nobody liked being in that spotlight. Um, but if we could do this outdoor show and do it safely and show to the world that, that South Florida, Broward County is open for business, um, Greater Fort Lauderdale is open for business, um, that there's, uh, they're going um, to have a couple of live TV segments as a part of the show. Um, we think there's a great opportunity to put Fort Lauderdale in a great light and show that um, we can do an event of this scale, we can do it safely. Um, people will wear their masks. We will, you know, there are going to be more exits and entrances so people can be more spaced apart. Um, but Inform is committed um, in Broward County and, you know, to their credit, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, uh, Mayor Trantellis and Chris Lauderbloom, the city manager, both stepped up and made personal commitments to the county and to the show saying, we will help, you know, with enforcement. Um, we'll make sure that people feel safe and comfortable. Um, but this is a great way for Fort Lauderdale to show the world that you know, we figured out, you know, how to, how to navigate safely, but we can have events here and people should come and visit. The last number of months have been incredibly challenging and we have seen wonderful stories of innovation and uh, development, as well as many sad stories, people losing their jobs, businesses closing. What have these past number of months taught you about resilience? Um, it's about being, uh, you know, adaptive. I mean, what we're doing right now, Abby, is a perfect example, um, you know, how you use virtual technology. Um, we're social beings, you know, as human beings. We want to interact. I mean, that's, uh, I am definitely much better um, when I'm in a room. I'm not a big phone person. I like, you know, seeing people. I like to understand body language. And, um, and that's just, you know, the way I'm, I'm hardwired as an individual. Um, but I look at companies. American Meetings is a local meeting planning company that does meetings all over the world for largely for pharmaceutical firms. Um, you can imagine how their business was impacted when people weren't meeting face to face anymore. Um, so Andy McNeil, the owner, I mean, do you shut your business down and just say, hey, well, it's beyond our control. We'll, um, we'll ask everybody to furlough. And when we get a virus and we get back to meeting in person, we're back in business. Or you can do what Andy and his leadership team did. And they said, you know, We've been doing some virtual stuff already, um, sort of like Invest has been doing, where you've had this as a component of what you do. Um, they're like, you know, we've been working on this because some of the pharmaceutical companies said, well, if we could save costs by meeting in person, you know, every other quarter and doing something virtually in between, um, can we, we could, that could make sense and we could reduce the travel and the time required. 
So they had already been working in this, but I think they work with six or seven different virtual platforms. Uh, pharmaceutical companies, as you would imagine, with healthcare are very much concerned about security. Um, so they want to have, uh, you know, sort of impenetrable um, virtual platforms to use. Um, but they are busier than ever. And now instead of, you know, meeting planners negotiating with a hotel, they're webcasters and they're, you know, uh, working in multiple languages with doctors all over the world. Um, so when I, when I, when I meet um, entrepreneurs like Andy that, you know, understood that they needed to adapt to survive, it's impressive. Um, a couple months ago, Delta Airlines actually invited me to come out to their Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport facility to see what they're doing, um, how they're making the traveling public safe. Um, I went with, you know, like, you know, I'm doing this because they asked. Um, and I was so glad I did. Um, it exceeded my expectations. When, when they showed how they're preparing the cabins between um, flights, um, sanitizing every inch of the inside of the aircraft, you know, luggage compartments, seats, uh, all the tray tables using electrostatic uh, disinfectant. Um, and when I talked to, you know, Spirit Airlines and JetBlue um, and, and these airlines, what their commitment is and how they've adapted, um, you know, I think they all understand that there are components of this that are probably going to stick. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Um, I sort of like the fact to know that uh, the table I'm sitting at at a restaurant has been sanitized and more than that, that dirty rag that's been sitting around for uh, probably a day or so that wipes off the table. Um, now I know that there's a, you know, there's a bigger concern with, with cleanliness and sanitization. Um, and I think your, your restaurant owners um, will, will, you know, adapt with some of these long-term solutions as well. It'll make all of us healthier and you don't have to worry about the flu season as much if we're taking some of these protocols and, and, and how we manage our businesses. So I think when people ask, like, well, what's the new normal going to be? I think the jury's still out on that, but there are aspects of this that I see that I'm like, you know, wouldn't be a bad thing as business people if we adopted these and just made them part of, of how we do business. Well, thank you again. That was Bob Swiddell, the president and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance. My name is Abby Maloney, and you've been watching Invest Insights. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, everyone. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest business trends from our knowledgeable experts. Be sure to check out the description below for more information on the segment you just watched. Thanks for tuning in.